welcome to the Kips Podcast. My name is Tyler Valencia. I'm the president of Kips and Time to Train Fitness. I have a guest that I've been really looking forward to having on the podcast. I know that he's going to be sharing some items that a lot of our listeners can benefit from that are going to be able to take, apply, but also just connect with. We have David Jack on the podcast. First of all, thank you for coming on, David. Oh, man. I'm so grateful to be here, Tyler. I'm really excited. Yeah. And I'm excited to do this episode. I, I know that we've been talking about doing this for a bit. And David is somebody that I've met over the last few months out here in the greater Phoenix metropolitan. And each time that we've connected, it's just been a great conversation. And I know our listeners are ones that are in the fitness industry, trying to, to grind it out, working on that, building their careers, all those items. And so today I thought a great episode for us to do and for us to a topic for us to talk about is mentorship. Mm -hmm. I myself have had mentors throughout my career. And that was something that when we last connected, which was a few weeks ago, when you were talking about mentorship and people that you've worked with, I could just see the passion and how much it meant to you that people out there that are starting or maybe have been in the industry for a bit and maybe they've never had a mentor. And they may, they might know the, not know the power of it. So that's going to be our main topic for today. But to give some background, David, can you talk about your your own background within the health and fitness industry, what you've done, and kind of what you're doing now? Uh, sure. I mean, the the long and short of it is, I came into this profession backwards. I didn't choose it. It kind of called me into it. I uh, thought I was going to head one direction. Wound up heading a different direction at a real small uh, early. Um, you know, crazy startup company when I was 23 years old with a partner out of the Boston area, lived on an army cot in a hay barn for six months. My parents were like, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, but but I, I went and uh, I just felt called. I didn't understand it, but I felt called to take a step. Uh, so I did. And then that got me into kind of the health, wellness, holistic side of, of the human condition. Mm -hmm. And then inside of that, because we weren't raising enough money and it was around the dot com, you know, era, the bubble, and all that. I had to try to find ways to provide for m like myself and my family after years of kind of piecing it together and and working in this startup environment. And by by sheer grace, man, these these two gentlemen came into my life through that organization that we were actually serving and working with. But then they started to mentor and teach me mm -hmm. about speed and and change of direction and locomotion and that side of human movement, and then really integrated strength conditioning. Uh, so just these these two these two guys appeared in my life at a time when I really needed them, and they helped shepherd me toward taking these first steps into actually coaching and putting out offerings in the marketplace to coach people. Uh, and then it just kind of chipped away from there, and I was in this little tiny, you know. Uh, 1400 square foot hole in the wall, awesome <laughs> little spot. No one knew my name, just coaching and creating and learning and making mistakes and being around some other really cool coaches that were willing to collaborate and share ideas together and actually coach together. Uh, and then kind of from that, I this other door opened up and another door opened up. And then like most of us, we come into the profession one way and we find ourselves in all these different areas, which is kind of really cool about fitness, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, then that led me to opportunities with men's and women's health magazine and prevention and that whole brand. And it just was able to do and, and still do some stuff, but was able to do a lot of really cool stuff with them for about 10, 12 years. Reebok uh, and their global health wellness practitioner instructor platform and, and some of their initiatives. Also about 10, 12, 15 years doing work with them. Uh, and then just been able to walk with so many awesome peers and be in different conferences and in, in different uh, activations and environments, uh, consulting for different brands, uh, was able to do a bunch of DVDs uh, mm -hmm. and get to that world, uh, some TV work. Uh, but mm -hmm. you know, it brings me back to now this, this kind of meandering road that I've gone down, some things that I've learned, some things that I've made uh, plenty of mistakes with. That now I almost find myself at a start at a place in my career where, in a way, I feel like I'm starting over um, and going back to square one in a lot of ways. But I'm stepping into the same thing, a different person. Mm -hmm. And so I'm hoping that this time around, I can bring some of those experiences with me 
to do the same thing differently, whatever that might be, and keep what's good in it, whether it's coaching or mentoring or being a part of a brand or helping activate some kind of initiative, um, kind of going back to the starting blocks, but but stepping in there, uh, you know, a bit of a different, a bit of a different horse, kind of ready to run the race. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, just hearing that latter part of it, I feel like people listening, the piece that they can take away is, oh, wow, like I have done so many different things within an industry, but I should continue to keep an open mind on where I might be going. I think, I mean, you, you said how, and I've consulted for companies as well. And the biggest issue that I've always run into is sometimes it's like, you're just beating your head against the wall here. And you're just trying to say, Hey, like, come on, you got to change your mindset. You got to change how you, you're approaching this. And yet you're right. talking right now, now. I mean, you've listed so many things that people aspire to working with different brands, uh, you know, doing DVDs, things that people are like, what, how, how do you get to there? And yet you're still at that point where you're like, I need to think differently. I, I need to, uh, you know, potentially start off at square one in order to continue building, continue growing, which mm -hmm. I think is very powerful for our listeners to, uh, to, to digest there. And so with this episode, I know everything you, you mentioned there. I'm like, man, this, that might just be a whole nother podcast episode there. Anytime. You I have and so I much to say on that. The, <laughs> uh, really the, the cost of the craft, the price of coaching, yeah, the the payment this profession requires of us, our families, our time, um, how hard it is to to have upside to make a, a really successful living, as compared to if we created some kind of tech or some kind yeah. of AI. Same time, same effort, same dream, same energy, but the market cap is different. You know, it's just viewed differently, and the market responds financially differently to us. Yeah, uh, man, just all of that stuff. Looking back and and realizing some some things I accidentally did well, some things I intentionally did well, and a lot of things that I just didn't understand uh, and that I missed or that I didn't multiply. I mean, I, I and it's a struggle sometimes when when I talk with some of my peers. We've been through this together, and I say if someone from the outside looking in would say this dude did these many DVDs, he was on these TV shows, he was with these brands, he did this stuff. Why isn't he like what happened to him? Mm -hmm. And it's really interesting when those things start to fade away. I mean, you, in a way you age out of some of those things in men's health magazine and I do other things, but being the face of the brand and being a voice of the brand and being out front, it's really interesting. The seasons that I, you, you go through and adapting to this new you and you've got to let go of what was past, you, you, but you also get to embrace what you learned and to bring it forward. But sometimes it's really humbling when man, your, your name was in a magazine or your name is is in a on curriculum or in a book or you were the speaker on a stage for for a while or you had 50 clients in every class and all of a sudden life has just put you to a place where now I'm working with one and I'm fighting to get one to come in. I could barely get an article written on whatever. So those moments are really, really challenging. I've experienced them. I wrestle with them. And I just want our you know your listeners to know they're not alone. They're not alone. Um, mm -hmm. And if there's anything that we could ever do to talk more about that, gather together, encourage one another. Um, to me, that's been one of the things that has been a game changer for me trying to navigate this profession. And I think that leads us into kind of having mentors, but also, you know, what I say is we we have these things that we coach people, we actually train and coach clients, then also peers. One of the things we talk about out of many uh, at the appropriate time is this concept of who's in front of you and where are they leading you? Mm -hmm. Who's with you and where are they guiding you? What are they encouraging and what are they, what are they speaking life into or not into? Like, who are you walking with? And then who are you leading and where are you leading them? So we say, who's in front of you? Who's with you? Who's behind you? And we just use that as a way because we know that that brings wellness to people. It brings mm -hmm. wholeness to the human condition. And so sometimes it just, there's moments in my life where I've said, I'm missing a mentor right now. I'm missing yeah. that piece. And I don't have to stress out over it, but I can be aware of it. I'm not speaking into someone right now. I'm, my doors aren't open for someone. I'm not passing on the legacy of this profession to someone um, and serving someone else the way I've been served. And so they just, it's just something to, to think about uh, and, and to just be open to paying attention to not stressing out over. 
A quick little promo break here in this episode. If you're a fan of the Kibbs podcast, you know that at some point there's a promotion for the Naboso Duo insoles. I just pulled these out of my shoes, gave them a quick rinse to get the sock dust off of them, and I wanted to talk about them because they're great, they're fantastic. They make an impact on your daily life. If you sit at a desk or if you're on your feet, sometimes your feet just feel achy or maybe they feel like they went asleep. That's for my, myself. I felt like after working a full day that my feet did not want to go to the gym, work out, do something active, and it led to some bad habits. But with these, I feel more active, I feel like I can do more things, and I've been using them for over a year now with your clients, with your family, with your friends. Share them, talk about them, see what they think because they really do make a difference. If you, if your feet feel more active, you're gonna be more active and that equates to being more healthy. Check them out, there's a link in the description. See what all the products they have and let's get back to this episode. I gotta say, just a small little break up here that you gave me the bet. You did the segue for me right there. Transitioning this to, <laughs> to talking about mentorship. I'm sorry, man, to steal <laughs> no. that thunder from you. No, it's okay. It's, it makes my job a lot easier All with right. each recording that I don't have to basically do like a hard stop on a, on a topic and then move into it. And I think that's the great part of having you on is that I know that what you're going to say is so powerful and that anybody listening is just going to get so just caught up with it that you could say whatever you want because it's, it's that good. It's that, that, that level of quality of, of knowledge. And so, uh, you know, keeping that same rhythm here with t working with a mentor and, uh, you know, what I've seen, uh, I mean, I know that people that might, that might be watching the stream or that know me, they, when I say how long I've been in the fitness industry, they, they might think, what you can't be, there's no way. And I, I felt the same way. I look at you <laughs> and I'm like, dude, there's no way. What are you 24? <laughs> And so me saying that I've been in the industry for 12, 13 years, you know, I've seen and worked with and educated instructors, new instructors, veteran instructors, and creating content from working in a gym or working for education or we're trying your own business. And uh, it's such a different um, industry than what's out there because of you could be doing five, six different things at a time and working in the fitness industry. Really? And that's sometimes how it, how it is to work as a fitness professional. And so with looking at mentorship, uh, there's so many different pieces of it. I want to start with, with you though. With, what are some of the benefits that you think can really help someone that's starting off in industry that they might not know what's going on? What are some of those benefits that you'd like to share? Well, I think I think one is, and, and, and in the end, I, I really find that it's interesting because no matter what we do in in any of the touch points in fitness, I really think there's common threads underneath it that we want we're, we're being drawn back to the same ultimate epicenter, and mm -hmm. that is people just want to be seen, they want to be heard, they want to be they want to be enough just as they are, and and they they want to get better in whatever it is that they're they're trying that they think or, or at least they want someone to help them figure that out. Yeah. So it's funny, a mentor isn't a lot different than having a coach. And because a mentor can walk alongside you and help you see the things you can't see, give you space to just sound off and, and have a stream of consciousness and be able to actually answer your own questions by just having the ability to speak out and to speak freely, but have someone on the other end who actually can watch the parade in your mind go by, but knows what they're looking at. I've mm -hmm. seen this parade before. And what you don't know yet is that on 24th Street, those, those streets are closed. Mm -hmm. So I heard what you said, but I have something that I might be able to offer to you. Take what you like, leave the rest. So I think there's this gap in mentorship. And I, and I believe that any, any advice, anything that can help us move toward the goals that matter to us, move towards serving people better with our gifts, our talents. I think a mentor helps you discover some of those things. I don't know. We're building something right now with a brand. Part of the assessment is, you know, there's the things you're interested in from a physical perspective, a mental perspective, but we've got things in there. Um, your gifting, your motivations, mm -hmm. your passions, your person, like so many people don't know who they are. They don't know how to look in the mirror. And so the right mentor who is genuinely interested in how can I magnify the good in you? How can yeah. I shine a light on you regardless of what I get back? 
See, a real mentor, and my mentors will say this to me, when I say to them, I am so grateful for your life, for your time, for the investments that you've made in me, that you're available to me when I make a phone call. Like, I can't, I don't know how to repay you. And their answers to me are this, you are a blessing in my life. Mm. Because as someone gets to a place where they can mentor, realize that like a stages of a person's life, part of what keeps them motivated and well and excited is to see the newcomer, is to give back. There's a sage component that makes us whole. When we've got all this experience and information, we're not supposed to hold on to it just for our gain. There's something beautiful that happens when we're given the opportunity to give to who's next. Mm -hmm. Get something back that money cannot return. You can't force it. You can't try to force being a mentor to someone. You, you can't will it. So that's why I say don't stress out about it, but you've got to be open to it. And you also have to be a door op open doors, we call it, in general, from your heart, from your mindset, and in your community. Just you don't even have to get detailed on it. There's just this spirit of that, Tyler, that yeah. draws whoever's supposed to be drawn in. And some people only want that much from you a critical pivotal moment in their life where you've got a piece of information that helps them with a breakthrough or move the needle. Others need, you need them to walk with you throughout your life. So I'm going to give you some examples. I have had spot mentors and specific mentors. I guess I would call, maybe they're not a mentor. Maybe they're a collaborative peer, but in a way they were a mentor um, that helped me with a specific thing or a specific season of my life that was, and they're, I'm still like this with them. If I, if I called them, they would come out here. If they called me at three in the morning, I'd be gone. There's no questions asked because I know they would ask the right things the right way. It wouldn't just be, oh, could you come? If they're going to ask, I know I'm on a plane or I'm on a mm -hmm. bus or whatever. Then I've had other mentors that have been with me throughout my life. And so I find that I have several sets of mentors in this specific area of my vocation and what's happening in my vocation. But then just by sheer grace, and I'm so grateful, I've had mentors that are interested in the person of David Jack, mm -hmm. how you think about what's happening around you in your family, relating to your kids, relating to noises in the world, relating to your place in the world. How, how should I handle this? You know, continuing to what we say call up and speak life into this goodness, this 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 the spirit of someone and something that genuinely wants to be others minded and show up in life in an authentic way that's not just concerned with myself and that not not that that's bad and what I'm what I need or how I need to work on things, just really calling out the best of me. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, and not saying that that's what it should be, or that's what it shouldn't be giving me an opportunity to have dialogue about it with someone I trust with someone I know is going to speak truth and love to me. Someone who genuinely wants what's best for me without anything in return, but someone who's also going to give me my, my inalienable right, um, from, from planet earth. And from, if you have a higher power, your faith, Freedom of choice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I think those have become hallmarks in my life with just some mentors that I have. As I look at them, those would be the things that I get to say about them. They poured into me. They led by example. They didn't judge. They spoke truth, but they let me take what I'd like and leave the rest. But they yeah. don't let it slip away. So if there's something they know that I've heard that I can't see yet, that I'm operating in a way that isn't, uh, cohesive with my values or with who they know I want to be and I'm trying to be. And I just kind of, yeah, I let that slip. A great mentor is going to be like, Hey, we had that conversation a couple months ago about, and how's that going? Yeah. yeah. They, they, they don't, they're not going to let me slide, man. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I think the, the point that I want to hit on here, there's two of them that came up in my mind. The first one being with how giving a mentor can be that some individuals that have had an impact on my life, they have been 
very high level CEOs, big brands that uh, I don't know how I got in contact with them, it, you know, through training. And then all of a sudden they're mentoring me and talk, giving me these in-depth conversations, guys that if I said the companies that work for you, be like, well, how did you know that? How do you know that person? And, oh. uh, you know, I'm just very thankful, but they would drop everything just to have a conversation. And there's usually the, the same response. Oh yeah. Just give me a call. And you're like, I, you want me to call you? Like you, you, you're literally this high level CEO. Uh, there's thousands of people that work for you. Like you want me to call you? And that's, that's their mentality is, Oh, just call me anytime. That's okay. And mm. it, it, it's, it's astonishing to me that people at that such a high level, they're, they're such givers. And I, it's, I feel like it's a common thread across the board with mentors is they're such givers. They want to help just how you mentioned they They want to give back. They see that next level of yep. that next wave of people coming up and they want to help them be better. They, cause they most likely had somebody in their life that had that same impact. And so the power of that, it, it, it's amazing to see. And, you know, the second part that came up to my mind when you were talking there was the, uh, there's mentors, there's different types of mentors. Uh -huh. I think that's an important thing to get out there for, for listeners is that it might be a different part of your life. It might be a different part of your career that is coming up and somebody that comes and helps you along. It might be a completely different than, you know, one mentor that you've had. And so looking at them and thinking, Oh, well, this person helps me with this. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I'll share that the first mentor I ever had, he's the one that helped me learn how to do all the things I do with computers, with, with editing, with filming, with content creation. And he's somebody that uh, inspired me to go down that path with fitness education. And uh, that that's very different than the other mentor that came into my life, which was more about re teaching me about relationships okay. and managing and, and being able to converse with somebody and being able to empathize with them and things along that nature that can not just it goes with business, but it could just be the relationships in your life. And so that type of mentor, there's different types and you never know what they're going to be able to guide you on that path with. And so um, it'd be great now to hear maybe some people that have helped you in, in your career and, you know, what did they, what did they teach you? Yeah. I, uh, so it's funny. I, I was just looking up, just trying not to look away, but I, I actually just wanted to revisit the definition of a mentor and the etymology yeah. of it. And, you know, in the end, it's, I think it's good to give context to it. Yeah. You don't really, if you, if you sum it up, it's, it's an experienced and trusted advisor. Um, and, and I, I think those two things are really important that they do have an experience level of the thing that you're seeking advice about, mm -hmm. but that trusted part of it. Um, and I want to make a, a, before I, I do, I'm so grateful you're giving me the chance to speak okay. about my mentors because yeah. A lot of times, and we don't do it for this, if we make a difference in someone else's life, I, I don't really care if the world ever knows my name. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't really care. I shouldn't. It'd be nice, but I shouldn't really care if someone ever mentioned, oh, this person transformed my life because of what they taught me. So a lot of times the people that speak in our life don't get the opportunity to, to be recognized. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I'm, I'm really grateful for that opportunity. But before I jump into it, you mentioned two things that I, I wanted to speak on related yeah. to those points. And um, one of them is this kind of this um, th this ethos, this this heart set behind a mentor. And I feel like on one side, being a mentor, it isn't about having all the answers. This is where I went wrong, right? This is where I didn't know because you know I I, I come I come from a family of of recovery uh, and and. Um, addiction and abuse. And so there's codependency. And someday I'm going to have a conversation about codependency and coaching because it really affected my life. And I didn't know how much it affected it back then. Like, uh, but boy, there's a cost to it. Um, and, and it steals from me and it steals from someone else. So I think the beauty of a, of a great mentor is someone who is going to let you figure it out, is going to let you walk it out. They're there, you don't have to make my decisions. You don't have to own my stuff and my life. You got your own life to work on. Um, so that's one. Like if I need to be needed, there's a healthy version in that and an unhealthy version in that. On the flip side of a mentee, what I've learned and what, what matters to me now, I want to honor my mentor's time. I, I want to honor their energy. And so I'm cautious about, do I really need to call 
and ask this? Or David, can you work this out? Like, have, are you able to cover ground on this? Um, so I, I it's just, there's this thoughtfulness. And here's the thing. My mentors would pick up the phone or call me back at any time. Mm-hmm. But there's there's this like unwritten, like beautiful, like spirit of the mentor is not going to try to take over your life. And the mentee is going to try to honor yours. And there's this beautiful giving and receiving. The last thing you talked about, these givers. I think giving when it comes from a cheerful heart, giving when it comes from a place genuine. I just am so grateful to share and be available in your life. When it's pure like that, it doesn't it doesn't lead to brokenness and overtraining and, and being worn out. If I'm mentoring someone and there's this twinge of something I'm going to get from it, or I should get back from this, a thank you, a blah, 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 a whatever, it really starts to become a, a job, an offering under compulsion, mm-hmm. under reluctance. And I find that that becomes challenging. On the flip side, I have always had a hard time in the past receiving, just receiving grace, receiving something without having to give even a thank you back in return. And what's hard about that is if I can't receive openly and gratefully and carefully, then you can't bless someone with the opportunity to give freely. Mm -hmm. So there's something really beautiful about that dynamic as well. And it's never perfect and it's not always a straight line, but I just felt led to mention those things that were on my heart that I'm still trying to keep in mind and figure out even for my own life. So I just wanted to, you know, put a period on that. Oh yeah. Uh, (laughs) I wound up, oh gosh, there's so many. Um, The first woman that I went into to work with that I met in an elevator in the NFL properties building that I shouldn't have been in in 1996 in New York City, that I went up to Massachusetts because she was starting a functional food, uh, uh, nutraceutical wellness brand. Um, I watched her. I watched her gene. I she didn't even she did mentor me, but she didn't even have to write me anything or or sit down with me. I watched her operate. I watched how she talked with people. I watched how she listened. I watched how she worked on the phone. I watched how she greeted someone. I watched how she welcomed them into our little office, even though it was humble. Um, I just watched how she created connection and Mm -hmm. networks. So I was able to be mentored through action by modeling something without even necessarily having that person have have to speak to me, though she did. Her name was Beth Thompson, an incredible human being. Inside of that same business that I wasn't supposed to be involved in on an army cot from an elevator in New York. So mm-hmm. I just love grace and and those kind of things in life. Um, I, 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 I was, you know, I'm such a disaster in so many ways and such a, you know, like this beautiful disaster that uh, I needed two of each. Mm-hmm. Like one wasn't enough in, in either of these two categories. But I was fortunate that I was given two mentors in that kind of fitness, wellness development side, in addition to my cousin who I trained with my whole life growing up. He taught me all about training and being in a gym and gym culture and gym etiquette and just building my toolbox and and learning exercise. And so he mentored me with my physical culture, my pursuit of fitness for myself. But the two men that started to pour into me on that foundation of coaches in college, so many fingerprints. And I could name hundreds of names as I think about them. And I probably haven't thought about them enough um, just to express gratitude for it. These two guys, one one's name was BJ Baker. He's actually still an unbelievable integrated uh, fitness professional coach, certified athletic trainer, CSCS, all of it uh, in the Boston area, in Needham. I think he's at um, Pure Performance Sports. I, I, I can't remember the name of the gym he's still at as their like director. Um, But at the time he was the head strength coach and assistant athletic trainer of the Boston Red Sox. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I just didn't get a good mentor. I got someone that really had something, you know, like so many different pieces to pour into me. And I'll tell you one of the things that he shared with me uh, that, that was the heart of where he comes from. Uh, Even all the other X's and O's, the heart of the principles that he carried that ultimately made a difference in my life. 
X's and O's, man, they can come and go. Principles, they stay. Um, the other one was a guy by the name of Mike Morris. And Mike Morris at the time was the assistant strength coach and the head speed coach for the New England Patriots. So these two guys came into my life, taught me similar things, but different things. I would jump in cars with them and take rides with them. I would get on phone calls. I would go watch them coach, bring a notebook, which we always in our gym, our doors, they still are. I've got a place here in a partnership with Arizona Grand Resort here in Phoenix. My doors are open. You come in from anywhere at any time, bring a notebook, ask questions. You are welcome in our space. Take what you like, leave the rest. Um, but they gave me those kind of opportunities, but they also poured specifically into things that I needed to do what was next, not what was. They they were able to future cast me and help me see vision and what might be possible, but they were really made available to me for what I needed to do next in my life, now and next. So that was really important. Um, and those two guys, man, oh gosh. And then I also paid them to coach me. So part of what I wound up doing was actually being coached by them just so I could learn and also achieve some goals, but to, to be mentored by them. What BJ Baker would always tell me, and he was really close friends with, and, and, and I'm friendly with Mike Boyle, but at the time he had an early relationship with Mike as he was building his brand in Boston. He said, you know, one of the things that, that I talked with Mike about, and one of the things that is so important to me, if I was doing anything in my job, it doesn't matter. Working on, you know, Pedro Martinez to get him to pitch, you know, at the highest level or cleaning up tape around the training table. If one of the people that I valued, if one of the mentors I, I valued and looked up to stood outside my doorway or looked, looked through a glass window and I didn't know they were there, what, what would they see? How would they see me operating in the little things and in the big things? How would they mm. see me treating people? And mm -hmm. that's really how he operated. That was the heart of how he, how he sees his profession. And so for me, for me, that's the right type of mentor because I want my heart to be mentored. I, I want my, I want the way I, the way I think, why I think it, how I can think about others. Um, I, I want those things to be mentored in me, not just how do I do this to get that so I can do another thing to get that. That's important too, because we got to survive. Mike Morris was so cool about him was just his open mindedness actually to how to pursue performance. And he did things so differently than so many other traditional people. And I'm a non-traditionalist. <laughs> uh, I mean, I love if it, here's my thing. If, if you feel better than when you came in, if it helps you move better, you're out of pain and you feel like that was great. I don't care what you did. I don't care if it's Richard Simmons, like doing a thing with you, like, he helped more people and hurt less people than most of us will combined in the fitness industry. People sweat, mm -hmm. they smiled, they felt part of something bigger, and they went home feeling like they mattered. And they wanted to come back, and they didn't get hurt. Yeah, Man, that's a phenomenal coach. And yeah. that's great fitness. But the mentor has to matter and match. For you, don't be going with someone you're not. Like, But that mattered to me. Mike, you know, seeing that like global outlook, I got... Actually, one more uh, in this category. Then I'm going to fly on the other side and let you you jump in. I just okay. love talking about this. Mike would say, I asked him one time because it's kind of how I'm wired. I'm sitting in the car. We're driving along to this session. I look over at him. I go, Mike, what is strength? And I asked kind of on purpose. And he just paused. Then he looked over at me and he said, you just asked a million dollar question. Hmm. Because what he knew was there's a million ways to get there. And what is strength to who? Why, mm -hmm. when, how? And we start to argue over things that just don't matter when there's really the heart of things that can help all of us. Yeah. And so I love that about him. I love the way he approached movement. I love this philosophy. I love the integration of things. Um, I just love the fact that he was just, he was just, he's just a great guy, man. Uh, he's yeah. down in the Tampa area. The third guy uh, that really, I was drawn to him that spoken in my life is this gentleman named Dr. Igor Burdenko. So Igor came over, he, wa he wrote the physical culture handbook for all of the schools in greater Asia from like the 19, early 1970s. There's st it's still in circulation over there. He has one book left in Russian in his house outside of Boston. 
And he wrote the whole book. If you saw this, Tyler, mm. it's unreal. The pictures, the movements, why, the 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 physical culture part of it, the the PE part of it, the play part of it, amazing. But he was exiled from, it's a crazy story. I'm not going to go into it now. He came to this country, his two, H, two PhDs didn't matter. He didn't know the language. He had a, a small child. He was basically shut out of his business and his, his because he was like a ministry level position there because mm-hmm. of a family thing that happened with his siblings that ultimately that government took as an insult. So he went to his office one day, his door was locked, his paychecks were shut off. He was stuck for three years in that mm-hmm. country before he could get out, come to this country and had to start over. But what he knew was, oh, and he, by the way, he also did all the performance development and protocols for Olympic weightlifting, track and field and figure skating for Russian Olympics. Wow. Smart. He came to a place in his life where he had believed that once again, these these principles of movement, these skill sets, this foundation that our country would take, and ultimately we go after what's at the top and it's upside down and it's unsustainable just because we don't take our time and we don't make it attractive enough to work the base and build our base so that the top can last for a long time. Speed, power, you know, sport performance, that's the peak. That's what comes out of the top of the foundations. So I just love the way he looked at it, but he also really believed in a combination of land, shallow water, deep water, and I mean, I'm sorry, water, shallow water, deep water, and land training in his experience for 60 years now of really affecting the human condition. And I loved that. So my last story on Igor, uh, and then I've got two quick guys and I'll make it real quick on how they've impacted me on the Mm -hmm. other side of my life. But Igor, I'm walking through his gym one day in Boston. And once again, I asked him kind of a leading question. Uh, But I said, I I said something. And he happened to be walking through the gym part of his training space, headed toward the pool. And he's invented a bunch of products and they're they're awesome. And movements. uh, And he grabs this dumbbell, Tyler, and he squeezes it, right? And you could see his arm and he looks me dead in the eye and he goes, David. You train with steel. I'm sorry, I'm trying with a Russian accent. You become <laughs> like steel. And he just stared at me, squeezed it. I saw it. He puts the dumbbell down. He grabs this tubing he's created. He goes, starts moving the tubing, like flowing with it. He's like, David, you train with tubing, you become like tubing. And he said, come, come, come. And I follow him out to the water and he points at the water and he says, David, you train with the water, you become like the water. And then he paused and he looks at me and he said, use them all, David. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, so that that kind of mentality about human movement and the human condition was just attractive to me. And so yeah. he was able to mentor me into some of that, what was already in my heart to help give me some shaping and some molding. On the other side in my life, there's two men in particular. There's a hundred of them that I could have never made it without that walk with me, that speak life into me every single day for the last 25 years of my career. In, and in my life, um, but two in particular that live at the foundation, Daryl Ferguson, uh, 91 years old. You'll never know his name. He wasn't in fitness. He passed away about a year ago, mm. um, but I know that he's at peace and he's free. That man and another a gentleman by the name of Tony Pacey, who's 80, he's still alive. Uh, those men met me at a moment in my life where I didn't know which way I was headed and what mattered to me. And still to this day, all the way up until the day Daryl passed away, we still had conversation. I still went to visit him at least two or three times a year. Uh, and then Tony, I was just on the phone with again last week. And it's like, he's there for exactly what I need when I need it. Uh, and he speaks so much life into me, into who I am. It is such, it has helped shape the man I am, which helps infuse into the things that this person might do in their life. Mm -hmm. fitness, coaching, working for someone else, being one of them. But those two guys told me a couple of things that were still resonate with me. Um, Tony would ultimately tell me that any, there's a couple, some of them I'll leave off because they have religious undertones and we don't need to go there, but, uh, but they're powerful and they matter to me. But one of them that has a general principle, basically like connect with love and walk in love. Like you have Dave, And it's going to be really hard to see people, love people, care for people. If you don't know how broken you are, how lost you were and are, how many mistakes you make, and that without grace, without mercy, without kindness, that I'm in trouble. Because if I can't see that in myself, my tendency will 
to not give grace, to see other people in a different way, other than seeing them just like me and me just like that. I don't care what you bring to the table because because I've been there. Mm-hmm. I don't care what mistake you've made because I've made a thousand of them and I know it. I know it about myself, but I also have this belief in this other side of this goodness that's in me. So it's, it's, it's having a right sizing of those things. And Daryl would always say to me, David, it's an as you go life in the things that matter to you. Be willing to be used, to be of service, to pause, to stop, to, to do whatever you're asked. And that still small voice inside, as you go in life, don't be so focused on the mission that you miss the mission mm-hmm. along the way. And so for me, I've tried to have an as you go life without being totally all over the place, which is a challenge. And then I just keep trying to come back to, man, like the heart of love and just trying really hard to, to, to see myself and people differently so that I can interact differently and, and maybe just maybe um, feed them something that, that is good for them. So uh, those would be, that was a rant, but I'm just so grateful to each of them had principles the overarching thing, like we started at the beginning, they were anointed and appointed to me. They didn't feel like they had to do this for me. There was joy when we were together and with each other. Uh, we respected and honored one another. They had things that I didn't know that they were willing to share with me without any expectation of anything in return. They genuinely wanted to pour and speak life into the best of who I was. And they believed in that, even yeah. when I wasn't. Yeah. Uh, even when I wasn't. You definitely teed me up for my next part here that we'll jump into it in a second, but something that I've shared with you outside of this podcast that I feel like is right on um, the same principles with how I talked about how I've become less goal oriented, which is uh, when you're in the fitness industry, everything's about goals. You try yeah. to get your client to a goal. You're trying to reach a goal. There's everything is, oh, I got to get to, I got to get to the end goal. I got to get to wherever it is in my mind that I am supposed to be at, where I've told myself that I need to be there. And of lately, I've been more about the, the journey. Uh-huh. And it, it was, I was watching a documentary. It was a food documentary. And this individual talked about that, that he learned how it was less about the goal and more about the journey in life. And it really connected with me. And it started to, I started to think about work. I started to think about health and fitness and it just clicked in my head that it's about the journey. And that's how I approach a lot of things. And I think that that is so important to, to think about with your career is the journey because you're going to miss out on items and that are right in front of you. And you're not going to appreciate them, but let's get back to the main topic here that I feel like you really teed me up for because it's such a, uh, I'm sure there's people listening that are going to be thinking about, uh, thinking about this or in that same position with themselves. And I don't even know if there's a right answer for this, but I'd be great to hear your response for it is with somebody that it might need a mentor, but maybe they're not there mentally, or is there a right time? to seek out a mentor or you, should you just be patient and wait for somebody to come into your life? What is, what is that, uh, what does that look like? What do you think that there is a mindset that you have to have in order to be willing to accept a uh, mentorship or do you think it, it just comes at the right time? Man, um, what a great question. Uh, I, I also, you teed me up. So I want to take a quick <laughs> half a step back and then I want to yeah. jump in on this. Um, you talked about, oh man, this, this could be a whole other podcast outcome. Everything now is metric, metric, metrics, capture, 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 AWS. I actually think it's taking some of the sport out of sport. It's taking athletes out of athletes. It's putting everything in this rubric of this is what success is. And this is what matters. And when the algorithm tells us this, we do that. Be careful, man, be careful. (laughs) And right now we're trying to figure this out and what's always worked. What's always worked is a heart to heart. I care about you as a human being and feeling the spirit of a conversation and being in a moment. And, you know, you talked about cooking. I ta- I shared this story again the other night. There's times in, in the kitchen when I get myself spun up, when I don't, I'm restless, irritable, discontent, I'm hungry, angry, lonely, tired. I'm carrying work into the house. I'm all of that stuff, right? This is wellness. This is personal wellness. So I can look at what's driving this 
There's times when I'm like, and by the way, there's times when we have to be on an objective. There's times when we got to knock a goal off, but yeah. what are they tied to? Why? Like, are you doing them just to do them to make, to have, like, you got a goal that's not really intentional, that doesn't really have deeper, bigger meaning and purpose in your soul. Like, man, okay. Sometimes you just got to go to work, but that's a grind. That's like a workout that's horrible mm-hmm. that you that you make yourself do seven days a week. Like, okay. Like you will overtrain and you will burn out. And you will learn something from that. And that's okay. But you don't have to go there. But I think about making dinner with my girls. If I don't have the right mindset to be present, it's right. I've got to do this. And I got to throw the broccoli in there. Now I'm the one cleaning up the dishes and uh, get in here. Oh, you, the, the food's getting cold. And it's just this stressful, like burden. And then if I shift it and I'm like, my gosh, my daughters aren't going to be in this house much longer, 17 and 19. I have a moment for them to be around me and my wife, my dogs, and I'm going to put on Frank Sinatra radio and we're feeling it and we listen and we're singing, we're doing whatever we're making food and tasting food and same meal, man. But uh, because my, what I'm interested in as what's important is different, you know? And, And I just think that's such a powerful example of just for me, making dinner, like it, it can go a lot of different ways and it's never perfect. But when I take time to just, even for a moment, just be grateful that I've got food in my fridge that I can cook. What a luxury problem. You know, you can't be fake about it and phony about it. And there's days when you're exhausted and stressed out and tired and that's real. Be real, you know, be honest about your emotions more than anything else. But that just struck me, man. So uh, now- <laughs> so I'll just speak from all I can do is share my story. And I don't know if I've got analytics on this or our other data, but mm-hmm. I would say it's a bit of both. And I'd love to hear your thought on that. I mean, for me, my mentors came to me. Um, I couldn't have been smart enough to write up a job description for what I thought I needed because I didn't know what I needed. I didn't know what I really needed. They were sent to me because of what what the universe, right? What the bigger part thought I really needed. And in retrospect, I did. Um, and so they came to me, um, but I was open to that. And, and, but, but here's the thing, open to it. Like I couldn't help but be open to it because when they came, my heart was connected to them. It was, it's like, even if I wasn't open, it made me open. That said, I've also for the last couple months in particular, and maybe in a year, because my, my, one of my spiritual mentors passed, and, and just a life mentor, I've said, I don't know that I've re- really ever had a mentor. I've got one man that's spinning up in my life right now that I think he's such a gift how he came in my life and the encouragement he's speaking into me. But have I really had a mentor in business? Um, have I really had a mentor in um, this phase of my life, how to navigate being this age with these age kids and the things that are happening in our life? So I have been praying about and I have been open to send, if, if I'm supposed to have one, send me one. Um, and, and also being willing to kind of look for it and and have it on my radar. So Mm -hmm. I I think like with fitness and wellness, you can't force anybody to do anything. And that's where I spent a lot of time and a lot of energy that I didn't need to do. That puts a burden on both sides of the equation. I cannot force people to have willingness. I can't force people to be ready to make a change. Um, and, and trying to do that isn't a coach, yeah. uh, unless you're doing it for a very specific reason and you've thought it out. Um, inviting people, uh, um, compelling people, like not promoting something and you need this to be better when it's attractive, when it's attraction, not promotion, when it's compelling, when it's take what you like, leave the rest. And um, yeah, I think that gives people an opportunity to to, to open up and step over the barriers. But in the end, it, this has to start in the heart and the mind of an individual. And just mm-hmm. like fitness, it's okay if you're not ready today. It's okay if you're not ready to get sober today. Those are your choices. And I've got to make my choices that are right for me. But that's yeah. your life. I, I can't make you choose something different. You know, I can make you thirsty, but I can't make you drink. Um, so in the end, I just think for people who are listening, if they're being... So I would say the three things, because people you walk with are also mentors, whether you, whether you know it or not, and all their, and you and theirs, 
if they're feeling tugged, like I really need someone to lean into and speak into my life, just whatever you do as an individual, write it down, make it a goal, declare it, you know, the secret, whatever it is, put put it into the universe, say a prayer about it, whatever your way of acknowledging that and releasing that is and inviting that, do that. If it's stirring in your heart, don't for you're going to be okay. If you don't yeah. have one right now, you don't yeah. have to force this and stress over this. Um, if you're feeling like, my gosh, I've been given a lot in this profession and I've had so many people pour into me and I just haven't had a chance to lean into somebody else who's next in my community or in my part of this industry, man, follow that in your heart and, and put it out there and be open to that. Um, and, and whatever we could talk about practical ways, then I think the people around you, you know, if you feel like, man, I need to just take an assessment and I need to take stock of who are the people that are in my life that I spend the most time with? What are the conversations that we have when no one's looking? Mm -hmm. What are the conversations that we have at the water bubbler? Like <laughs> what, what are the things we're doing with our time? How are we talking about other people? Where are they pointing me? Where are they encouraging me? Mm -hmm. Um, and then just really taking stock of, man, all of those sayings about the people you travel with and the voices that are in your head and your heart, what you eat every day, they will affect your life. And yeah. so I think if anybody's feeling a tug in any of those areas, you know, um, it will it will manifest itself for you and for them the way it's supposed to. Whether it is I'm asking for it wherever I go, uh, I need I need help. Could could you open your doors for me? And and think about the ask. You got to follow the spirit of it. You, you don't meet someone off the street and be like, "Can I come spend five days with you?" And can I da, 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 da? like? Would it be possible for me to come see you coach sometime? Would it be possible for me to to spend a few minutes with you after this talk? And and if not, that's okay. Is there someone I can follow up with? Do you have a mentorship program? Do you have something I can start reading or, um, you know, whatever it might be? So there are ways to do that, that have tact and have a good mm -hmm. bearing. Uh, but, I, but I do believe if it's stirring in your heart, it's about to show up. Yeah, good points. Good points. And I think all of what you said, 100% agree with. And I think it is a, it's a combination of timing. And being willing to, are you mature enough? I can think of, you know, relating this back to the field that we work in. I'm sure that 18 to 20, 20, whatever age it might be that we all mature at different ages. And when we enter this industry, we might have big heads and think we're going to accomplish so many different things. And we have this education and this is the way that you're supposed to train. Every other way is not the way you're supposed to do it. And then you look at it, look back and be like, and you think, well, why, why did I think that way? Why did I act that way when I came into this industry? And it comes to a point where you realize these things. And maybe that's the point. I think that uh, sometimes that's the way the world just works, that those two things align, that you are at a stage in your career where you can accept a mentor, that you want that advice, that guidance. And all, all of a sudden, somebody comes into your life and you're like, wow. I really like the way that they approach this, or I really appreciate their outlook on this. And all of a sudden it just connects. It, it just comes together that way. So I think that uh, I agree with you that there, I don't think there is a right answer. I don't think that you can go about looking, just constantly looking for a mentor. I need a mentor. I need a mentor. Yeah. I get into I a situation. A I need a girlfriend. I need a boyfriend. Yes. I need a, you hardly ever find the right one. Um, yeah. You force it like that and you put pressure on yourself. As you were speaking, I had this thought come to me. I think at different phases in my life, or or I can picture in in other people's lives, like you think you want this mentor that you want. Like I want LeBron to mentor me. I want to <laughs> no, like LeBron can't mentor you unless he's guided to mentor you because I don't have 50 of the skill sets that I need before LeBron can actually mentor me. Like yeah. I'm not there, or I can't understand the level of business that that person's at, I'm just, that's not the right timing for me for what I think I want. Mm -hmm. What's beautiful about a mentor coming to you is the fact that I didn't come up with a rubric of why I needed one. Because if I come up with a rubric of why I, I need to make more money, I need to get more clients. No, that's, that's business. Yeah. You find a consultant for that. You pay for speed. You pay for someone who's done that really well. 
you create the transaction, maybe you build a better relationship and you go to work. A mentor that comes to you when you don't ask for it, they're coming to you for a reason. And it's not about an outcome. It's not about making you get something you think you want. It's probably coming with something that is going to magnify something good in you that's going to be used for good for others and bring you something that you need that you can't find on your own. That's part of what I love about the synchronicity of a mentor that comes to Mm -hmm. you because it's probably coming for a reason that has some, some deep, deep purpose and intention. Great advice there. Great insight too. Uh, And uh, the next piece that I want to jump into and kind of last question, question before we get to our podcast takeaways, we're not there yet, but the last time we connected, you talked about a story and maybe you don't, you want to share a different one, but it it was a story about you mentoring somebody Mm -hmm. and the power of it and just the experience of it on both sides of it, seeing this mentee go to another level, but on yourself, you know, what you learned from that experience, can you jump into or share a story where you've mentored somebody and, you know, the whole experience of it and what you saw from your, from your lens? Yeah. You know, I I think there's so many people that I've had an opportunity to walk with and and speak life into and have the same done back to me and people that I've been able able to just for moments of their life or throughout their life for a long stretch. Um, but I would say almost every single person that I've had an opportunity to connect with that it's morphed into a role of mentorship. All I can say is I was grateful. Like, as I look back, there was never one of those situations where I'm like, oh gosh, I don't, I, I got a gas. I can't, I got to ghost this. Like, I don't want to call this guy. I don't want to talk to her. I, da, 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 da. It was always a privilege. It was always a gift to me. Because there were things I needed to learn. There were things Mm -hmm. I needed to hear. There were things I needed to be reminded of. You know, like the program of recovery, they'll talk about the newcomer keeps us well because we see what we were like and we see what what can help us get to a different place in our life. And so being a part of that in people's lives, I just think that I get more. I got blessed. I'm so thankful. And they would say the same thing. And so I just think there's this, there's an energy there. There's this give and receive trade-off where it's, I just consider all of those moments a privilege, regardless of what they did or became. Mm-hmm. Like that we were able to talk real, talk open, not have an agenda of what we get for one another. At least I'm, at least for me, right? In those moments, they, they needed something um, maybe, but I, I just, it was such a special, it's such special, special, sacred time and a special part of a human relationship and a human condition. That's a gift when you're given the gift of being a mentor or being mentored. Um, and sometimes you don't know when you're doing that and that's okay. Mm-hmm. The left hand shouldn't know what the right hand's doing anyway. If I know how much difference I've made in someone's life, do pulse check. I probably need to start checking myself because I'm getting to a place where I'm getting puffed up. Uh, like, like I did something for them. No, I did nothing for you, but just sh- listen Share some experiences I've had, some challenges I've had. Maybe here's some people you might want to talk to. Sound off on me. I'll just be a sounding board the best I can. Um, I have no idea what I'm doing half the time, but just I'm available. Um, I think that's that's like where you get to the heart of the purity of it. Um, Mm -hmm. So you know, I think that there's something there. Uh, I think there's something there that's interesting. But but there's so many stories I have, and maybe sometime I should write some of these stories. Um, because there's principles in every one of them. I, I can remember people coming into our our, our gym, um, myself, a co-coach where, man, we cut our teeth together. I'm so grateful for him. His name is Jeremy Frisch. He runs a chief performance. He does incredible things with youth development. And I, I bet you some people have heard of him and he's just a coach's mm-hmm. coach. And I, I can remember us having an open door policy and people coming in from colleges, people switching careers, uh, uh, parents, we we had clients that were adults that had another job that came in and took notes and they actually got a certification just so they could take care of themselves better. Mm. So any walk of life was welcome at, at really almost within reason, almost any age, unless it was disruptive to our group. And then you've got to honor two goods and balance it out. Um, but we just opened our door and we had people come up. There was one guy in particular who used to drive an hour and 15 minutes each way, twice a week for a year. 
And he would just sit in our training spaces and go out in the field with us with a notebook. And we're like, and he would just take notes, ask questions, take notes. It was like masterclass. And, and it wasn't so invasive or interrupting that we couldn't do our job and serve our clients. But it was powerful because we were able to actually learn how to teach better, learn how to coach better, see the mistakes we were making in the questions that someone was asking us that helped us sharpen our, our craft. And we just felt so grateful that someone was like-minded and wanted to collaborate and share. And it, it was such, it's, and then to watch them move on and people now run their own businesses, build their own products, be at the head of brands, be on television, you know, uh, starting foundations and running charities, um, changing communities through what they do in a community relationship because of things that we've talked about or things they've experienced through us our family of people like 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 oh, you have the same heart man the people watching this this have the same they're not here because they're interested in just the next and oh and how do i punch the button and get what i want from it these mm -hmm. people that follow your podcast are different and i'm so thankful for them because we don't need more noise we need voices that are interested in raising the standard of care for our profession meeting people where they're at and serving them with what works for them, whether it's yoga, Pilates, dance, jazzercise, CrossFit, I, it doesn't matter. How, does it work for them? Mm -hmm. Does it make someone else's life better? Then we're probably headed in the right direction. Yeah. And so I, that to me is, if you've got someone raising their hand to say, I want to speak into your life or I want to, I want to model some of the things that you do, man, sacred. Yeah. Yeah. One of the big things that I've taken away from this whole episode, this whole conversation has been about watching in terms of people watch you and they're, they're learning from you. Uh, and what came to my mind was at a time when I would never thought that I was mentoring somebody. But when I first started uh, my first company was an outdoor boot camp, and we had interns and uh, you know, later on, one of them came up and said, once they got a full-time position after he said, I learned so much from you, just how you operated. And I use all the same things that you taught me at my sure. new job. And, you know, that was one of the biggest compliments somebody's ever told me. I didn't, I didn't know that he was watching or learning from me in that capacity. And the, the, the fact that he went off and took them and applied them, you know, that's uh, something that's huge. It's, it's, it's amazing, especially in our industry that somebody could take them and go find a full-time position that they're getting benefits. They're getting a salary, things that we think about in our industry, we're like, well, those aren't normal things. And so, uh, you know, looking back on even now, whenever I work with somebody with online workouts and they, they'll say that, Oh, did you Tyler, you, you kind of mentor me with a lot of this stuff. I'm like, really? I'm just, I'm just doing my job. I'm just doing my, my job to help you get better. And because if you get better, we get better. And, you know, those are things that somebody that's in our industry, maybe they're a veteran instructor and they're like, wow, I would really love to give back and mentor somebody. But maybe you're already doing it and you don't even know. And that's yes. something that comes along. And it, when the thing, when the stars align and all of a sudden you, you, you've been thinking about, I'd really love to help somebody help give back all of a sudden, it might just come together. So uh, I think that's a good segue here to our podcast takeaways. And I decided to switch some things up here because- good, good. Hey, and mentor, <laughs> by the way, you've you said it, and I want to leave that with them. Mentoring yeah. is modeling. Yeah. Mentoring was modeling. You know, love that. actions activate something in people and they can see your heart for it and they can see your passion for it. And I also want to declare, and, and I want to apologize if there's people that that I haven't shown a good example for. And there's people that I led in the wrong direction. I did not want to genuinely do that, but I'm a human being. I'm prone to mistakes. And really what this has also sparked for me, and I want to thank you for the topic and the podcast is, I really believe that taking care of ourselves is easier when we have an intention greater than ourselves and something mm -hmm. missional that moves our soul, whatever that is for us. It's amazing how it transforms fitness and wellness in the pursuit of, of self-care. Yeah. Um, and this has really sparked something in me because I don't want to lead someone down the wrong road. I don't want to show up and act in a way or, and I'm going to make mistakes, but it, but it creates this impetus for me to go, David, are you taking care of yourself? Are you managing your forgiveness, your anger, your resentments, your energy, your time? Are you pouring into the priorities in your life, your kids, your family, your wife, your house, you know, are you doing the things that are ultimately my, 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 for me, my faith, my prayer time, are you doing the things that are creating margin in you and creating space in you so that 
when you're out there, you're able to model in a way that is helpful to people. Yeah. And, and you have a heart to collaborate, to share, and to help others. And I think it starts with the heart. I appreciate that. And uh, I think that, you know, giving back is, and that's what I learned from a mentor. Just how we talked about earlier with mentors being so giving, that is 100% something that I learned from them. It, it, it just blew me away. And I feel like I remember, I feel like it was maybe 2017. <laughs> and I remember telling my wife this, that I'm just so blown away how giving these people are. The mm -hmm. people that are willing to share their knowledge. And it really had an impact me, on me in that capacity that I thought, how can I be more giving and, you know, help others that want to grow in that capacity? So it's, uh, it's, it's a great conversation. And, and that's why I knew that this one would be, um, one that we easily got through. But let me get to the, the podcast so takeaways here. Then Thank you one for more mentoring question. me right <laughs> now as we speak in trying to figure out how to do something next in my life as it relates to media and content. And yeah, so for, for the viewers out there, uh, you're actually living it right <laughs> now uh, in my life. So thank you. Great. Last question here, David. Yep. What are three myths about mentorship? And it could be from the mentee perspective or the mentor um, perspective. Three myths. Wow. Yeah. Uh, You've got to be perfect in order for it to be productive for someone else. Good. You don't. Yep. You don't. Um, I think I know what's right for another human being. Yep. I've got clues, but I do not have right to authorship of their life, um, which frees me and them up quite a bit. Um, uh, that mentoring is going to take a lot of time and a lot of energy. Yeah. Um, it might take some time, but if it's done from the right heart and it's like you said, in the right timing, in the right spirit, and it just comes together to, and you'll feel, you'll, you'll know it, and it will just start to develop on its own, it will probably be some of the most valuable, blessed, give back to you time. That's what's so ironic about it. Like, how could I spend more time and actually feel better, you know, mm -hmm. uh, but, it, but really good mentorship and mentoring uh, has, has had a way of doing that in my life. And, and from what I've heard uh, from, uh, you know, in the lives of, of those that have, have mentored my life. And I mean, I could pull up text messages right now with several of those mentors that we've talked about yeah, saying th when my thank yous come out um, to them, just, just saying, what a, this is like a week ago with one of my mentors. Um, I'm just so thankful uh, for for you. And and on honestly, like who am I that you would spend this time with me? And what a gift uh, of of what you've done in my life. And then the comeback is, you know, like I tell you over and over again that that you know this is how he writes it. That you're you're the grace of God in my life, and you have you bring me so much joy when all I feel like I'm doing is like. I gotta let you go. Like I'm taking too much <laughs> and it's just such a profound gift. So yeah. thank you for, thank you for the encouragement. Powerful, very powerful stuff. Uh, before we sign off here, David, can you give some information on how somebody can reach out to you or maybe social media? What is the best way? Yeah, sure. I mean, social media, I've just uh, been kind of in the freezer on it for four years. I was never great <laughs> at it anyway, but that might be kind of opening back up again soon. People can direct message me on social media because I have the apps. I don't look at them, but I get a message alert if I've got a direct message. Mm -hmm. So like anything that's like the David Jack, I think is Instagram. Um, Coach David Jack Fitness might be Facebook. Um, I, I'm on LinkedIn. I don't know what my, it's, look up David Jack. You'll see a wacky old picture of me on there. Just send me a message, any of those things. My email, uh, the easiest one to use, and it'll come back from a different one, which is a weird one. Just know that it's it's the right one. It'll get to me. <laughs> is David at davidjack.tv as in television, Thomas Victor. Um, so you know, those are just some ways. I'm out here in Phoenix. If anyone is in our neighborhood, you and I, 
we've talked about gathering some people together. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and I think I want to talk to you more about that. So, but if anyone's in this area or wants to come out, I've got a partnership with a hotel. I can get you a really good rate. Come give yourself a couple of days away. Come catch your breath. I've had a lot of people do this in the past. Um, and, and I'll just do my best to spend whatever time and just listen. And, and maybe I could get our friend, uh, you know, Tyler over and, uh, <laughs> you know, just weigh in on it for a second. But so any of those, any of those ways, uh, or they can reach out to you, uh, Tyler, if they know you mm-hmm. directly. And if you can filter them and you know who they are, and I know you know those relationships, you are more than welcome to give them my contact information, my cell phone, to text me or to reach out, call call me directly. I'm an old school guy. I will text. I will, <laughs> I will create quick messaging. Uh, I will email. Um, but but for me, man, it, it, it start, you really start to move the needle when we get here. Next level when we get here. Next level when we get here. So mm-hmm. open doors. Great stuff. Great episode here, David. Thank you so much. I knew this is going to be a fantastic episode. So I really appreciate you coming on, sharing so much insight, stories, things that people are just going to digest and just grow from. So I really appreciate that. Man, it is my, that's why I said I'm excited in the beginning. I didn't know exactly where it would go. I just know it's a great topic. And I, I just want to thank you for the ability to let this this old new guy uh, <laughs> come back and keep learning. So, man, I'm so grateful. Awesome stuff.